The world's largest and most powerful space telescope has revealed unprecedented views of Jupiter. James Webb Space Telescope has hardly opened. It started as a faint, almost unnoticeable flicker, deep in the cold darkness between Mars and Jupiter. For decades, astronomers have scanned this vast region, known as the asteroid belt, mapping countless rocky worlds and icy fragments. But on a quiet night, the James Webb Space Telescope, humanity's most advanced eye in space, picked up something different. It wasn't an asteroid. It wasn't a comet. It wasn't even on the known orbital maps. This object was moving fast, faster than anything of its size should be moving in that region. Dr. Eleanor Vargas, lead scientist at NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, leaned in over the data, her voice sharp. Pull up the infrared spectrum. I need to see its heat signature. When the readings came through, her heart skipped a beat. Objects that small, barely 10 kilometers across, should be frozen solid out here. But this one was radiating heat, enough heat to suggest some sort of internal energy source. By the next morning, rumors were already circulating in closed scientific circles. Was it a rogue comet fragment passing unusually close to the inner solar system? A volcanic asteroid heated by tidal forces? Or something artificial? The Webb telescope continued tracking. And then... The first image came in. The deep space snapshot showed a dark, irregular object, but wrapped in a faint glowing halo. Not sunlight, something else, Dr. Vargas whispered. That is not just rock. But the story didn't start there. To understand why this discovery was so shocking, you need to know about the Kirkwood Gap a mysterious set of empty lanes in the asteroid belt caused by Jupiter's immense gravity. Objects that wander too close to these orbital gaps are often thrown into wildly different paths, some slingshotting toward the outer solar system, others hurled inward toward Mars, Earth, and even the Sun. Now, the James Webb Telescope was watching in real time as this object skirted dangerously close to one of these gravitational traps. Except, it didn't behave like a normal rock. Instead of being pulled into a new orbit, it seemed to steer. That's right, it adjusted its trajectory, ever so slightly, but enough to defy what pure gravity would dictate. The team at NASA quickly escalated it to a Level 3 anomaly, the highest classification before declaring an object a potential technosignature, meaning possibly artificial. Within hours, Webb's ultra-deep scans revealed something even stranger. The outer layer of the object reflected certain wavelengths of light too perfectly. Natural rock scatters light in all directions, but this reflection was crisp controlled, like polished metal. And yet there was no sign of antennas, solar panels, or anything obviously engineered. It looked, from a distance, like a black shard of glass, but one humming with unknown energy. Then came the shocker. At exactly 0314 UTC, as Webb was collecting its most detailed infrared data yet, the object released a brief, controlled burst of energy. In the telemetry logs, it looked like a faint flash, but in astronomical terms, it was a deliberate signal. It lasted exactly 1.618 seconds, the golden ratio in time. Coincidence? Dr. Vargas didn't think so. If that's deliberate, then we are not alone. And just like that, the story jumped from the quiet halls of astrophysics labs to a high-security meeting room deep within NASA headquarters. The Pentagon wanted to know if this thing posed a threat. SETI researchers wanted to know if they could try sending a signal back. And the public? They didn't even know it existed. Yet. What no one could explain was why this object had suddenly appeared, moving between Mars and Jupiter, glowing with heat, and seemingly adjusting its path. The only certainty was this. 
it was heading somewhere. And whatever it was, the James Webb Telescope had just become humanity's only witness to its journey. Over the next 48 hours, the strange object moved closer to the inner solar system. Its velocity wasn't constant, sometimes slowing, sometimes accelerating, as though it was navigating invisible lanes through space. NASA, ESA, and even private observatories scrambled to point every available telescope toward the coordinates Webb provided. Ground-based scopes could barely make it out, but radar mapping confirmed something shocking. The object wasn't spinning chaotically like most asteroids. It was holding a perfectly stable orientation. Dr. Vargas compared it to an aircraft holding a steady glide path, except there was no air in space. In the classified conference room, the mood was tense. Military analysts suggested it could be some kind of interstellar probe, not unlike our own Voyager spacecraft, but much more advanced. SETI's Dr. Hallstrom leaned forward, speaking slowly. If it is a probe, it's behaving like it's on a mission, and missions have destinations. The question was, where? Trajectory simulations offered a chilling possibility. If it maintained its current course, it would pass close to Mars, then potentially swing toward Earth's orbit. Meanwhile, James Webb was still feeding back astonishing imagery. Close-up composites revealed lines on the surface, geometric, almost circuit-like patterns that glowed faintly in the infrared. Natural mineral veins? Maybe. But the symmetry was suspicious. And then, as Webb observed, Something happened that made even the most skeptical scientists go silent. A section of the object's surface opened. It wasn't a dramatic sci-fi movie-style hatch, but a small, deliberate expansion, revealing an inner glow like molten gold. The opening lasted only three seconds before sealing again. The data suggested it wasn't ejecting anything. It was scanning. In a secret briefing to the White House, Dr. Vargas summarized it bluntly. This is not a rock. It is controlled, powered, and possibly ancient. And now, it knows we're watching. Governments faced a dilemma. Reveal this to the public and risk mass hysteria, or keep it classified and monitor quietly. But they were running out of time, because the object's next move would decide everything. On day four of observation, it reached the edge of Mars's gravitational influence. Instead of passing by, it slowed down. Slowing in space requires energy, a lot of it. Something or someone was actively controlling it. And then came the final shock. It released a second signal, but this time, Earth was the clear target. The second signal wasn't just a flash. It was a data burst, one that multiple radio observatories picked up across the planet. At first, it sounded like static, but when NASA's decryption algorithms kicked in, a pattern emerged. Mathematical constants, chemical formulas, and a sequence of star maps. The star maps weren't of our sky. They were from somewhere else. Dr. Hallstrom's face went pale. These coordinates, they're not random. They're pointing to a system 400 light years away. And that system has a planet in the habitable zone. The implication hit the room like a tidal wave. This wasn't just a probe. It was a messenger. And it was telling us where it came from. Then came the final twist. As Webb tracked the object, it began to move again, this time away from Earth. It passed Mars, swung by Jupiter, and accelerated toward the outer solar system. In a matter of weeks, it would be gone, vanishing into the deep dark, just like Aumuamua years earlier. But unlike Aumuamua, this left a trail, an undeniable, deliberate communication. NASA faced a choice. Send a reply now, knowing it might take centuries to reach its origin, or remain silent, 